Hi everybody, welcome to the professional development webinar for May 2022. This is a watershed moment for CompuScholar as this is the first time we have announced a brand new course in back-to-back -back months. So last month in April we introduced our new C-Sharp programming course and today we're really pleased to talk about our new Computer Science Foundations title. Hopefully you've been following our webinars this year so you all know who I am at this point. This is Chris Hughes from CompuScholar and again I'm always happy to answer your questions you can email me at chris.used at compuscholar.com. Our new course is really a result of quite a bit of demand from teachers. We fielded lots of inquiries over the years uh, from teachers and schools that wanted a CompuScholar solution for two different things. Uh, one is AP Computer Science Principles, so most of you are aware of that relatively new course from the College Board. And then there are a lot of similar state-level courses that are not AP-level courses, but they have substantial overlap with very, very similar standards. And so computer science principles and the similar state standards do a lot of programming, and they also kick in a lot of digital citizenship and computer hardware and software, impact of computing, and some other skills. And so we really wanted a single CompuScholar course that would meet all of these needs. And so today, again, we're pleased to announce a new title. We're calling it Computer Science Foundations, and this course can be flexibly used either for AP Computer Science Principles or for other state-level courses that are very similar. We do have a full syllabus for AP CSP, and I'll show you that in just a moment. But big picture, when you're going through the course, uh, the first 20 chapters will cover all of the required CSP topics, all of the big ideas and everything that you'll find in the College Board's course and exam description. We do have two additional chapters, 21 and 22, that are dedicated for CSP students. So chapter 21 will talk about the performance task that is required of all students. And then chapter 22 will help prepare students for the CSP exam. The course does contain a number of optional units after that from chapters 23 onward. So we have units in things like web design and computer skills and computer careers. So there's lots of additional material that you can use after the AP exam to fill up the remainder of your school year. Now, many districts would like to use this title for introductory computer science as well. States will define very similar state standards. And so again, you're gonna basically go through chapters one to 20 to cover those same state level topics. There might be a few things that you can skip based on the needs of your particular state. You'll obviously skip over chapters 21 and 22, which are for computer science principal students only. And then you'll make more heavy use of chapters 23 onward in order to meet specific state requirements. So let's flip over to our website and I'll show you where to find these new course syllabus documents. All right, from our main website at CompuScholar.com, we'll go into four classrooms. And up under courses, we have a new entry for Computer Science Foundations. And this course has not yet been released, so some of this information is still subject to change, but we wanted to show you everything that we have so far. If we go over here to course syllabus, you can see there's two different syllabus documents. If you're going to do introductory computer science, you just pull up this document and take a look, and that will help you navigate through the chapters and skip over the things that are CSP specific. And if you are doing AP computer science principles, which we anticipate many of you will do, then you can take a look at the CSP principles syllabus, and it has all the information that you'll need to be successful with your CSP class. I'll also point out over here on the homepage, if you scroll down a little bit, we do have a full cross-reference table for all uh, AP CSP topics. So this is a pretty familiar alignment document that shows all the CSP requirements on the left and then chapter and lesson citations on the right. And we do cover 100% of the CSP standards. So Computer Science Foundations is again a brand new course for us and it is not yet complete. So we're announcing it today, but we still have some work to do. And I wanted to share with you the phased rollout plans we have over the next year. So for the upcoming 2022-2023 school year, the course material is actually going to be a mixture of things. We're pulling some chapters and elements from our existing Python programming class. We're pulling some chapters and lessons from our Digital Savvy class. And we're cherry picking a few other things from some of our other CompuScholar titles as well. And we're also writing a bunch of new chapters to fill in some gaps that aren't covered by any of our existing courses. So in the upcoming school year, this new course is going to be a mixture of some familiar elements and some new things. And we really expect to be at what we call a beta status by the fall of 2022. And what does beta mean? I'm glad you asked because I have a whole other slide on that. 
So we expect our beta course to be ready by the fall of 2022. And beta means to us that all the chapters and lesson text pages are there and usable. All the chapters have quizzes and exams. All the hands-on activities are complete. Any specific guidance we need for our computer science principal students is intact. And we also have alignments to state standards for similar courses. So it's a basically functional course at this point, uh, but it is at what we call a beta status. And there are a few things that will likely still be pending. Uh, we anticipate the instructional videos may lag a little bit behind. So some of the videos may be there and some of them uh, may be coming soon. And of course, as a beta course, we'll be doing some ongoing editing and tweaking of all of the course material. So we anticipate that it should be, again, a, a functional course, uh, but we reserve the right to uh, complete some elements a little bit later on, as well as do some additional editing. And that's what we call the first phase of the rollout. In our second phase, we're going to continue working on the course uh, through the fall of 2022 and the spring of 2023. And we'll do additional refinements based on the feedback we get from our beta users. And we also want to spend some time differentiating the material from our existing courses. So what we're doing for this first year is really cloning a lot of material, including lessons, activities, quizzes and tests from some of our different courses and assembling them into a new course. And over time, we want to differentiate that material. So if a student, for example, takes our Python programming course first, and then they come into computer science foundations or vice versa, they won't see exactly the same chapters and activities and quizzes and tests in some cases. So students will still naturally learn some of the same subject material if they take multiple courses, but we want them to do that with different activities and assessment questions and so forth. So we'll spend some time differentiating that course material that we've cloned from other courses. So certainly by the fall of 2023, the course will be complete and production ready. And depending on the level of feedback and so forth, it may be production ready substantially sooner than that. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. In terms of availability for your classrooms, yes, we are willing to make the beta course available for the fall of 2022. As always, we appreciate your feedback and your suggestions, and we'll certainly incorporate those into the course as we continue working on it. So as of today, we actually have a preview that is now available through your teacher review account. Uh, this is not even the beta course yet. This is the alpha. So we still have a few months to go before the fall of 2022 starts. But by popular request, again, we do want to start showing teachers what we have now. And there's definitely going to be some dust as we continue constructing the course. So some of the lessons are coming soon and those things will be complete by the fall of 2022. So let's go take a peek at the course as it is right now. All right, I'm logged into my teacher dashboard here at learning.compuscholar.com. I've already requested review access to the course, and you can see Computer Science Foundations is a preview right here, so I'll click on that. And you've got a little note at the top about the course being still under construction. You've got a link to the AP Computer Science Principles syllabus if you want to examine that, as well as the introductory computer science syllabus. And if you have questions about how this course would align to specific state standards in your state, uh, take a look at our state alignments pages. And if we haven't updated your state yet, just give us a call, uh, shoot us an email, and we can definitely give you some guidance on how the course will meet your specific state standards for a non-AP introductory computer science class. So some of these chapters will be fairly familiar. We've added chapter one and chapter two to cover computing concepts and networking. And some of this material is sourced from Digital Savvy, for example. And then we get into our Python programming material. So we start teaching these students Python and we work our way through uh, many, but not all of the Python programming chapters. We do avoid object oriented programming at this level because that's not part of the CSP requirements. We've added a midterm project. And then we have a bunch of new material uh, for computer science principles and other state standards around things like collaborative design, a lot of information on algorithms, understanding and processing data, impacts of computing, legal and ethical concerns, and cybersecurity. So these first 20 chapters, again, would comprise everything you need for computer science principles, as well as many state level standards. And then after chapter 20, we get into what we call the optional units. And the first optional unit is for the computer science principles prep. So the first chapters 21 and 22 deal with the performance tasks and preparing for the CSP exam. The next unit is all about web page design with HTML and some really lightweight CSS and JavaScript. So that's three chapters here. 
The next unit is on computer skills. So if your students need to learn about operating systems, computer files, and search engines, you can uh, take a look at this material. We've got a small optional unit on computer careers, which is a common requirement in many CTE courses. And then the supplemental chapters, again, if students want to learn how to run Python on their computer, they can do that. And we have a chapter on enrichment topics, and we expect that to grow over time. So some of these chapters are complete. So if we go into chapter 12, for example, you can see we've got all the lessons and videos. If we click on lesson text, it's all right here. Uh, so again, these parts of the course right now are fully functional. In other cases, you may go into a chapter like the midterm project. And if there's nothing here, we just haven't uploaded those lessons yet. And you might find some chapters later on that actually have the lessons enumerated, but if you click on a lesson text link or a lesson video link, it just says coming soon. So again, we appreciate your patience as we continue to work on the course throughout the summer in order to populate those things by the fall of 2022. But we really wanted to give you an idea of the scope and sequence of the course. So between what you can see here that's already uploaded online, as well as the syllabus documents, that should give you a really good idea of how the new Computer Science Foundations course is going to work. Thank you so much for watching this monthly webinar. There's been a lot of interest in CompuScholar's Computer Science Principles Solution, so hopefully you found this enlightening and informative. And again, don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have any questions.